What's good, Sundial traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It's Friday. Happy Friday. It's April 29th. It's the last trading day of the month and last trading day of the week. Hope you're well today. And in this short video, we're going to be discussing the stock Sundial, ticker symbol SNDL, going to review their Q4 and full 2022 earnings, my thoughts and opinions on the stock and the earnings and what to expect in the days, weeks ahead. We'll do some technical analysis. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me and the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here and take the bell you'll be notified on any future updates first thing we'll look at is the report here I'm not going to dive too much too far into this again I'm not really paying attention too much to earnings right now in the uh, in the MJ space because it just we're just not seeing any any real weight behind any of these moves right because we're so bearish because we're in a bear market we're in weekly and monthly downtrends I don't think anything's going to change anytime soon, right? We need the whole sector to reverse. And at this point, it's probably going to take a major catalyst. We know that safe banking could get introduced into a manufacturing bill. That would be a catalyst that would explode the whole sector. And I'm just not really paying attention to, there was a few other LPs that, you know, had uh, earnings as well. And even, you know, MSOs, they have great earnings for the moment. Uh, but again, it's just, we're not seeing anything. Look what happened to Tilray, you know, shot up 90% and it gave that whole move back. And I'm just not expecting uh, really much until, uh, right, until the U.S. legalizes, until we see the growth from that. Uh, we know that Quebec just recently allowed edibles, so they still don't have vapes there yet. And we're still growing in Canada, right? Uh, so to look at these numbers and the, these earnings reports, and like I said, a lot of people online are just, you know, foaming at the mouth, waiting for these things to get released. And I'm just not seeing the urgency and the need for, uh, you know, for paying attention so much right now when we know uh, nothing's really going to be, uh, no moves going to sustain, sustain itself unless we see weekly and monthly uptrends. So until we get into a bull market, I'm not really that concerned with, uh, with earnings. And like I said, it's just, it's a little lackluster at the moment and nothing really going to, to change that until we see a major catalyst in my opinion. So they did have, uh, they did miss on their estimates. They missed on revenue. They missed on their EPS and they just closed their Alcana acquisition as well. Uh, but some good things in here, some some bad things. Um, I'm, again, just in effort of time, I I really am not paying that much attention to uh, to the earnings. And you got to think too, right? It's still federally illegal in the U.S. and some countries. Uh, you know, le Germany set to legalize this year. There's so much growth ahead of us, and I see a lot of people trying to value these MJ companies using traditional valuation metrics. And it just doesn't make sense, right? They're using the same valuation metrics that they would to value a grocery store chain or, you know, just a basic company. Well, we're dealing with a, a Schedule One drug in the U.S., right? It's still federally illegal and there's so much growth, right? So you can't really just look at the sheer numbers right now. Uh, I think there's just so much growth that it's almost pointless at this, at this time, right? We know that the LPs are starting to cut costs and they're striving towards profitability. Uh, so taking a look at the results here, it was, all, it was all messed up here. I don't know what's going on with investing.com, but they finally got it right. So the revenue was forecasted at 28.01 million. It came in at 22.72 million. So pretty big miss there. I kind of assumed that they were going to miss because last quarter was 16 million and they came in at 14. And then they were forecasting 28, 28 million this quarter, which was an extra 14, double what I, I just didn't see them beating or even coming close to that. And sure enough, we, we missed by quite a bit. Uh, in terms of EPS, it was negative at 0.03. So pretty big miss there. They were forecasting negative 0.0033. And again, I, I'm just not that interested in the earnings. Look at the, what they're forecasting though, 64 million. Uh, I'm taking this, what they say with a grain of salt though, because like I said, they were way off here. I think this said uh, 29 million at the beginning. Uh, but I, yeah, I said that they missed their, their revenue. I did a post um, on socials and whatnot. Just getting a, t a chance to do a video now. But again, I'm not going to dive into the actual financials because, like I said, I don't think it's a huge deal until we see uh, the whole sector reverse and confirm weekly and monthly uptrends. It's just going to be more of the same, right? Uh, and Tilray was a classic example uh, after its earnings. And if we take a look at the chart here, we'll do some quick technical analysis. So SNDL had a huge move there off the low. Uh, we saw about a hundred percent move in how many days was it in about 10 days and we had this uptrend line that we were watching so when we were backtracking we had the low of the bounce the high of the bounce and then we started daily consolidation and we were just looking for a daily higher low we knew we had no support right we had no support established all the way up from that 
nine, that hundred percent move. And this is why I was telling people, even when Tilray shot up 90%, I said, be careful. MJ still not in a weekly uptrend is still in a weekly downtrend, still in a monthly downtrend. So we need to be skeptical. And sure enough, uh, we gave the whole move back and same with Tilray and we had no support. So we knew to be expecting daily consolidation. We were daily overbought. And if you would have just exited when we lost the low of the previous daily candle, meaning we, we were starting daily consolidation and that happened on March 29th. So if you just entered there when we lost the previous candle low, that would have saved you from those current levels, about 35% of downside. You could have easily reload cheaper, or if you were looking for entries, you could have you could have uh, been aware of that. We also confirmed a daily downtrend here. We, we broke the daily downtrend uh, with a break of that lower high pattern, but here we are, uh, here we were um, starting daily consolidation. We formed a lower high and a lower low, and we confirmed a daily downtrend. So even if you just exited there when we lost the daily downtrend, again, would have saved you about 34% worth of downside, and then we had a daily EMA 12 and 26 bear cross, meaning we could likely see more downside and just another lower high and lower low. And we're still in a daily downtrend. Uh, we're likely heading to daily oversold. I did a market video. You can check that out a few minutes ago on the broader market. And I do think SPY is likely going to uh, head to weekly oversold, likely going to, to test that 400 level on SPY. And that would mean that we're likely going to see a lot more downside on MJ as well. Seen a lot of people saying, oh, MJ is down again today. And then I looked and then SPY was down almost 4%. <laughs> I'm like, how do you not understand why MJ is down, right? Um, I actually have a short position on the S&P 500 with SPXS, which is a 3X inverse leverage. So since SPY was down 4%, percent today my short position on spy spxs was actually up 12 percent it's a 3x inverse leverage so i'm going to look to uh to take profit on that short into um into monday into next week more than likely i'm going to look to uh, test 400 on spy and then i'm going to cash in that short position on the s p 500 and i'm going to buy more beaten down mj with it and then once we see another bounce in uh, in spy i'm going to look to add more to that short i'm still going to hold some uh, but I'm definitely going to sell some of that that short position to buy some more beaten down MJ. I bought some MSOS, the ETF. I think that's a great purchase. SNDL, great uh, great entry here in my opinion as well. Again, full disclosure, I don't own any at the moment, but it's on my watch list. And again, I was just uh, very very skeptical. Right? We knew that the whole sector was still bearish. We needed weekly uptrends across the sector, and we didn't have it. Uh, SNDL did confirm a weekly uptrend though, so it was one of our stronger names. You can see here we had the low high higher low and higher high. We're just looking for a higher low compared to 45 cents. So that's the key support. If we lose 45 cents, we're likely heading to 40 cents support. Uh, but key resistance to be watching is going to be up at 89 cents, the high of that bounce. And we're just scouting a weekly higher low. So if you're looking for some entries, this is a great, great entry opportunity with fairly low risk. You could set your stop below 45 cents, or if you wanted to allow a little bit more risk, you could set it below 40. And, uh, you know, risk in terms of percentage wise from current levels, you know, you could essentially risk uh, four to 15% to make upwards of 80, you know, 90% plus, right? And if this is our bottom, if we're starting to reverse and see a macro level trend reversal, then like I said, I think we could, uh, this could be a great opportunity here to, to enter. But again, we were in weekly uptrends on SNDL, but you know, Tilray didn't confirm weekly uptrends. The ETFs like HMMJ, MSOS didn't confirm weekly uptrends. So we knew to be skeptical and watch for a pullback. We were daily overbought. We hadn't consolidated on the daily time frame uh, in a very, very long time. How many trading days did we go? We went nine trading days in a row without any daily consolidation. And this is why knowing how to do technical analysis or surrounding yourself uh, around people who do is very beneficial. It's like, I always use the analogy. It's like two people go into a casino and uh, they never played before. One person has the cheat sheet there uh, on the blackjack table and the other one's completely in the dark, right? And it, if you have a cheat sheet, it's like looking at the chart, right? You almost have a cheat, a cheat sheet, and uh, a little, uh, little bit of uh, a little help there to uh, to help you with with trying to determine the most likely scenario. We are extremely bearish, though. Close below the 10-week moving average on the weekly time frame. We had a bear cross of the MACD, bear cross on the stochastic. Not looking good on the weekly time frame in terms of the moving averages on the weekly. We could see a bear cross here of these of these moving averages, the 50 and the 100. Um, it's not looking good right now. And then on the daily chart, we had a death cross back here on August. So if you would have just exited there on that, uh, on that death cross, that, was, that occurred when we were at about 68 cents. And then from there, we dropped all the way down to 40 cents. So that death cross was a major warning sign. But again, we knew to be expecting 
Um, you know, once we lost that uptrend line, we were daily oversold. We hadn't consolidated on the daily time frame in nine days, and the whole sector didn't confirm weekly uptrend. So we need to be skeptical of the of the bulls, and it's all about the bulls proving it. And in order to prove it, we need to confirm weekly and monthly uptrends. Going to end it there though, thanks so much for joining us again on The Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with Power Group. If you could smash a like, again, help support me in the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe if you're new here and tick the bell to be notified on the next video. With that said, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend everybody and we'll see you next week.